Back at it again. It's me, Charlie, your not-so-typical time traveler. There I am, lugging groceries, thinking about my expanding do-not-recall folder. And what do I see? My ultimate weakness. That food truck. The siren of the streets. I tell myself, Charlie, remember the ghost pepper debacle? But my stomach's already making executive decisions. I'm back home, diving into some deliciously questionable takeout. It's a gamble with my time-traveling gut, but hey, some things are worth the risk. A few hours later, I'm lounging on my couch, patting myself on the back for surviving the takeout. But then, I feel it. A twitch in my bowels. Is this it? I wonder. With the weariness of a soldier heading into battle, I rush to the bathroom, bracing myself for a potential addition to my do-not-recall folder. But after an hour and a few masterful games of Sudoku, nothing. No time travel, no historical figures, no ghost peppers haunting me. Relieved but slightly disappointed, I call it a night. Maybe it's just regular indigestion, I think, as I hit the pillow, ready to dream of a normal life without accidental time hops. Middle of the night, there I am, catapulted from my bed by my adventure-seeking bowels. It's like they have their own night shift. Racing to the bathroom, a mix of anticipation and dread fills me, praying I don't end up somewhere embarrassing. Barely making it to the throne, a thought crosses my mind. Is this when I return a chick? But then, wham! The room's a spinning kaleidoscope, images whirling faster than a disco ball at a rave, and off I go once more into the past. I'm off again. This time I land smack in the middle of a Mongolian war camp, surrounded by soldiers. And guess what? I'm decked out in full Mongol warrior gear. Well, almost full. Because for some cosmic joke, my pants are missing. There I am in the midst of these fierce warriors, my privates dancing in the wind. Talk about a breezy introduction to the 13th century. So there I am, Mr. Half-Dressed Mongol trying to blend in. One of the soldiers looks at me and I'm bracing for the worst. But no, he just nods and barks what seems like an order. Next thing I know, I'm hoisted onto a horse. Yep, still no pants. Riding a horse in the 13th century was never on my bucket list, especially after that medieval fiasco. Let's just say, it's not the kind of draft you want to experience. I'm trying to keep up, thinking about how this is definitely not covered in my health insurance. Then, in a wild turn of events, I'm mistaken for a messenger. They hand me a scroll, no clue what it says, and off I go, delivering important messages Mongol style. As I ride, I realize, hey, no digestive rumblings. Guess my time-traveling gut is taking a break? Or maybe it's just enjoying the scenic Mongolian landscape. Who knows? In the world of Charlie's turdy, see anything's possible. Delivering these important Mongol messages, I accidentally wander into Genghis Khan's strategy tent. Imagine a guy in half a Mongol outfit, holding a scroll he can't read, standing among history's fiercest warriors. I blurt out the first thing that comes to mind. Nice weather, huh? In what I hope is Mongolian. Great. Turns out I may have accidentally declared war on a neighboring tribe. Listen. I'm trying to be a decent Mongol messenger, all while secretly searching for my ancestors. After days of scouring the camp and nearby areas, we get orders to move out and attack a village. I'm given a message to deliver to the very village we're about to raid. As I hand over the message, the guy receiving it makes my bowels twitch. Bingo. Found my relative. But now, I'm in a pickle. I found my ancestors, and I'm also part of the army coming to attack them. How am I supposed to pull this off without getting them and myself skewered? So I'm on this horse, decked out in Mongol chic, trying to play the part. As we approach the village, I'm panicking, thinking, how do I save my ancestors without becoming Mongolian public enemy number one? It's like trying to play chess while riding a roller coaster. Riding into combat with the Mongols, let's just say it wasn't a walk in the park for me, especially without pants at first. Thankfully... I found some discarded trousers, a bit smelly, but better than nothing. As we near the village, I'm praying my ancestors heeded my warning to flee. 
There we are, a sea of Mongol warriors, and I'm trying not to look like I'm about to betray Genghis Khan. Then I spot an angry Mongol soldier glaring at me. And yep, he's the pantsless guy. Looks like my time-traveling antics have struck again. So there's my ancestor, strutting out of the village like he's the star of his own action movie. He aims his bow and arrow at the Mongol horde, and my heart's in my throat. The arrow sails through the air, a real dramatic moment, and lands right in front of Khan. Not the best first impression. I'm watching this, thinking, Yep, that's my bloodline. Brave, but not exactly the brightest bulb. Now I'm not just a time-traveling messenger. I'm in the middle of a family feud with Genghis Khan as the referee. And there I am, in the middle of this impending Mongol showdown, thanks to my ancestor's arrow antics. Genghis Khan is not amused, and I'm frantically trying to figure out how to defuse this without becoming part of history's bloodiest bloopers. My time-traveling adventures have landed me in some pickles before, but this? This is a whole jar of pickles with a side of, what in the world do I do now? There I am, galloping like a madman on a horse in the middle of a Mongol battlefield. Why does my family line keep popping up in history's weirdest spots, I think? Is that Salem Bridge lady pulling the strings? But no time for conspiracy theories. My ancestors just taken an arrow. In a mix of heroics and sheer panic, I kick my horse into overdrive, charging through the chaos. It's like a scene from an action movie if the hero was a time-traveling, slightly confused guy just trying to save his relative from a history textbook fate. Rushing to check on my ancestor, I find the arrow didn't hit anything vital. Just as he's trying to do his best warrior impression getting back up, I, in classic Charlie style, accidentally trample him with my horse. Out cold he goes, just like that. And Khan, witnessing this, starts cheering as if I've pulled off some strategic masterstroke. Imagine that, hailed as a hero for clumsily knocking out your own ancestor with a horse. If my life wasn't already a comedy show, it sure is now. There I am, circling around, trying to ensure my ancestor's safety, while pretending he's just another fallen enemy. Then, I spot Mr. Pantsless Mongol, the guy whose pants I'm wearing. I'm thinking, not another tavern brawl scenario, please. I avoid eye contact, but then an arrow whizzes past my nose. I turn, and there he is, charging at me, drawing another arrow. In a total panic, I react. But let's just say my Mongol warrior skills are more Monty Python than Genghis Khan. So Mr. Pantsless Mongol is barreling towards me, and I'm on horseback, wearing his pants, trying to look menacing. But let's be honest, I'm about as menacing as a kitten in a lion costume. I'm dodging arrows, flailing around and doing my best not to fall off the horse. It's like a circus act gone wrong. Just as he's about to let another arrow fly, I duck, more out of sheer terror than any actual skill. The arrow sails over my head and I'm thinking, Charlie, you're in way over your head here, buddy. Amidst this chaos, I'm desperately trying to protect my ancestor, who's still out cold on the ground, keep my stolen pants on and not get turned into a human pincushion. It's just another day in the life of Charlie, time-traveling, accidental Mongol warrior. In the thick of the battle, there's me, Charlie, dodging Mr. Pantsless Mongol like I'm in some kind of medieval slapstick comedy. In my wild escape, I somehow gallop my horse right into the path of an arrow aimed at Genghis Khan. Bam! It hits me in the arm. Khan looks at me like I'm some kind of self-sacrificing hero, thinking I took an arrow for him. I'm standing there, wincing with pain, thinking, Oh, great. Now I'm the accidental bodyguard of Genghis Khan. Just when you think time travel couldn't get weirder, it throws you an arrow, literally. So there I am, Charlie, the accidental Genghis Khan bodyguard, arm throbbing, surrounded by Mongols who think I'm some sort of noble warrior. Meanwhile, I'm just trying not to scream because... Let's face it, arrows hurt. Mr. Pantsless is still glaring at me, probably wondering how I've stumbled my way into hero status. And my ancestor, still out cold on the ground, blissfully unaware of the chaos I've caused. It 
It's like a historical sitcom where I'm both the main character and the punchline. Back at the Mongol camp, I'm nursing an arrow in my arm, a captured ancestor, and a serious case of what next itis. Out of the blue, this burly Mongol guy sneaks up and suddenly decides he's a doctor and yanks the arrow out like he's pulling a rabbit out of a hat. I scream, a sound that probably startled the horses into the next dynasty. I'm left wondering if Mongol medic training consists of grab and yank techniques. Meanwhile, I'm scanning the prisoners for my other ancestor, feeling like I'm in the world's most bizarre game of where's the ancestor? Now I'm nursing an arm that's seen better days, still clueless about my missing ancestor, and wondering if Mongol med school is just a weekend course. After the impromptu surgery by my new Mongol friend, he decides to cauterize the wound with a red-hot knife blade. The last thing I remember before passing out is thinking, this is definitely not in the first aid manual. The next morning after my crash course in Mongol medicine, zero out of ten would not recommend. I wake up feeling like my arm's been used as a drum in a heavy metal concert. I check on my ancestor. He's doing okay, just another day in captivity for him. But then, panic mode. My other ancestor is still MIA. I'm limping around the camp like a one-armed detective in a historical drama gone wrong, trying to solve the mystery of the missing relative while hoping my arm doesn't fall off. The things I do for family, right? Suddenly I see a group of Mongols marching towards me on a mission. I jump to my feet, filled nerves and confusion. They surround me, announcing that I'm to come with them. Next thing I know, I'm in Khan's tent. He's expressing gratitude for my heroic act in the battle and offers me an unusual reward, a chance to marry one of his daughters. As I awkwardly scan the room, one of the girls gives me that all-too-familiar bowel tingle. Wait a minute. Is she my other ancestor? A daughter of Genghis Khan? This just took a turn into a whole new level of weird. Hesitant, I confess to Khan that marrying his daughter is a no-go. Turns out, even with my time traveler's secret language decoder, Mongolian is a tough nut to crack. Amid my confusion, Khan bursts into laughter at my refusal to marry her. Turns out she's destined to marry the village leader, not me. As her belly begins to glow, indicating she's my relative, I feel a sudden stomach cramp. Time travel. Here I come again. In a surprising twist, Khan wants me, Charlie, to conduct the wedding between his daughter and the village leader. As I stand there, stomach rumbling like a time-traveling engine ready to blast off, I'm clenching with all my might to stay in the present. Khan's men usher me to the wedding area and there's my arrow and hoof-hit ancestor glaring at me. Talk about awkward family reunions. Amidst the chaos, Khan declares that my arrow and hoof-hit ancestor, in a twist of irony, will marry his daughter and become the new ruler of the very lands he had just fought against. I'm there trying to cobble together wedding vows with a hint of don't anger Khan or face a horse-ripped fate. The pressure's on, not just from the wedding but from my increasingly rebellious stomach, begging to time travel. As soon as the wedding ends, I bolt to a nearby tent, barely managing to pull down my ill-fitting borrowed pants. In that moment of desperation, I'm whisked back to my time, the sound of a splash in the toilet marking my safe return. As I finish up, I go to wipe, but yowza, my arms in agony. Resorting to a clumsy southpaw wipe, I check out my arm in the mirror and almost have a heart attack. It looks like it's been through a medieval battle. Because, well, it has. As I'm nursing my arm, still in shock from its gruesome state, I start pondering my next move. The doctor's visit is going to be a hoot. So, Doc, funny story. Got hit by an arrow. Then a Mongol warrior tried to patch me up with a red-hot blade. Standard procedure, right? I can already imagine the raised eyebrows and the baffled look on the doctor's face. This is one for the medical books, and definitely not something my insurance company's usual injuries pamphlet covers. As I wrap up this wild chapter, I'm left with a medieval-style wound and a whole lot of explaining to do to Samantha. She knows about my time travels, but how am I going to spin the tale of Mongolian warriors and arrow injuries? Let's not forget the mysterious Salem woman. What's her next move in this historical chess game I'm unwittingly a part of? 
With that, I have a question for you. How do you crash a wedding Mongol style? Show up with an arrow in your arm, propose to the bride by accident, then get promoted to wedding planner. Beats bringing a blender as a gift, am I right? With each trip, the plot thickens, and I can't help but wonder where and when I'll end up next. Stay tuned for more of my time-traveling escapades. Thanks for joining my bathroom turdesy. Drop a comment with your guess on where the next flush will take us. And like and subscribe to keep them flowing. Check out my favorite toilet time reads when not traveling through my family line. Works by author.